Welcome again to the Vintage Electronics channel. Today, we're going to be taking a look at this thing. This is a Webster Chicago wire recorder. So let's talk a little bit about the history, get this thing cleaned up, and see if we can get some audio off of it. Stay tuned. Well, I picked this thing up pretty cheap. The guy said it, uh, he didn't think it worked, so we'll give it a shot. Do a little bit of cleaning on it, see if we can get it looking at least decent. Use a little cleaner paper towels to see if we can get some of the gunk off the outside case here. Yeah, she's pretty nasty. Look like they're cleaning up too terribly bad. Well, I'll get the other sides and then we'll see if we can get the top open to see what's inside of it. All right, well, let's get the lid off this thing and see what we're working with here. Yep, that's a uh, wire recorder, all right. And we do have uh, a couple extra reels of wire on the lid. Well, she's a little dirty. Probably seen better days. I mean, we've definitely got some gunk caked on this thing here. Yeah, there's even a reel of wire on there. It'd be interesting to let's get this thing cleaned up, look at it, talk a little bit about the history of these things, see if we can get it working, and uh, we'll go from there. So wire recorders actually come from a very interesting place in history. Uh, you know, we're all familiar with magnetic tape recorders, you know, whether it's an old cassette or a reel-to-reel -or, -reel or a VCR that, you know, VHS and beta, all of those. These actually use a really, really thin wire. I mean, it's almost, almost can't see it there. Very, very thin wire. Yeah, this one looks like it was a, uh, maybe a one hour spool. I think that, that says maybe. But, uh, so what they did was they passed this wire across the head onto a take-up spool. And as you can see, as we rotate this manually, if you can see that back there, this head actually moves up and down to wind that wire up and down on the, uh, the take-up spool. Really cool, really interesting piece of equipment. And really, this was the first type of home recording that most people could do. Uh, you know, before this, there were, you know, home record disc cutters that you could buy and you could get, you know, maybe a couple of minutes of, of recording on each side. But I mean, how many of us know somebody that had a, a an actual record disc cutter in their house? Not, not very many. Uh, you know, that was probably more you know, wealthy people and, and you know, people have more money than, than cents, really. And the wire recorder came along. It was actually invented in its purest form right at the turn of the, the 20th century, right around 1898, 1900, uh, by a Danish inventor, I believe. Uh, Polson, I think was his name. Uh, but uh, they really didn't come into widespread use until companies like Webster Chicago and Webcore and others actually came out with these portable units. Uh, you know, in the heyday was probably the, the mid 40s through the early 50s before, you know, a tape recorder actually came along that was, that was cheap enough and easy enough for people to use. But an interesting thing with these, uh, you know, they were used as dictation machines and, and things like that, but there were actually, uh, you know, they were actually used to record you know, radio communications in World War II, some aircraft black boxes uh, up until maybe the early to mid 50s uh, used wire recorders as uh, flight logs on the airplanes to record the uh, conversations back and forth with the control tower. I mean, really, really neat. Uh, and it's something that a lot of people haven't haven't heard of. We've all heard of tape recorders. We've all seen reel-to-reels and cassettes. Uh, but a lot of people haven't seen the wire recorder. So I thought it'd be something neat to... To pick up and, and see if it's 
you know, worth fixing and, and worth taking a look at. Maybe we can get some sound off of these old, uh, these old uh, spools. You know, maybe it'll be something from the 30s, 40s, or 50s. Might be neat to, to listen to. So, uh, we'll keep cleaning on this thing, see if we can get it spick and span a little bit here, and uh, we'll see if we can take it apart, look inside, make sure everything looks good, then we'll plug it in and, and give it a test run. All right, so I popped the screws out of here so that we could get a look at the mechanism inside. And uh, that looks really rusty, uh, and I guess it is discolored, but it it's not coming off of there. So that just that might be just surface rust in that metal. But as you can see, it's a very, very simple mechanism. Uh, basically, you have two operations up here. It's play and, and rewind. Uh, you've got a, a drive from the motor here, fly, a rubber, rubber flywheel that drives this, or drives the, the, the main reel back in. So there's not a whole lot to it. Uh, if we click it on, We can see that it's actually um, it's actually running a little bit a uh, little bit noisy, but it's it's a whole lot of heavy metal in there. Everything feels tight, maybe just a little bit dry. Let me turn this back off. Try to blow it out a little bit. Have anything uh, hanging out in there and then we'll try a little bit of a little bit of silicone lubricant down in the uh, that down in there make sure I clean off the uh, lubricant I spilled because that won't necessarily be a good thing for that drive wheel leave it to me to make a make a mess everywhere. Brakes look good on there. I'm not going to do a full restoration on this. Basically I just want to get it running and you know so we can see what a wire recorder actually looks like, sounds like. Uh, I mean these things are they're not incredibly rare. They're you know not incredibly desirable. Uh, as long as it works it's something I can you know every now and then come out and maybe do a little bit more work on but I don't plan on doing a full restoration on this thing because uh, it really has no use other than something maybe just to look at. I'm not going to record anything on it and, and use it in my everyday life. So uh, we'll test this out, see if we can, uh, it's a little quieter, Get a little bit of noise in that. It doesn't feel like there's a bearing in there. I think that's may just be how that thing was originally. Excellent. Uh, probably do need to clean the head on this. Uh, let me get this thing rotated around. We'll take a look at that playback and record head. Well, that playback and record head is exceptionally hard to see in there, but it looks like we've got three, maybe three different contacts there. Like it's literally just making electrical contact uh, with that wire. You know, with the tape head we're used to seeing, you know, this nice glossy flat surface, but like that is just basically a few contacts in there making contact with that that's that's actually pretty neat I did not expect that but if I rotate this take up real see how you can see that head going up once it reaches the top it'll come back down and basically that's just so it can feed the wire over onto the, the take up reel and then back onto the source reel uh, without it bunching up now these things were known to uh, create just absolute mouse nests of, of wire that you're never going to untangle. So that, that was probably another problem with it. Hopefully we won't end up with that problem, but let's get this thing put back together and see if we can make some sound with it. Alright, let's see what we end up with here. One thing I will say about uh, wire recorders is they are very fiddly to be able to get these things started. Got anything on here? Mm -hmm. 
going to get away. Just say bye, but don't say things that I'm not grab it, you know? Maybe I'll pay all you guys. I know it's better. Yeah, I don't know what you're going to have to pay. Look at this thing. Sounds like a kid, maybe. Recording level is really low. Oh, I'm not getting a whole lot of output out of it, but. Well, I know this wasn't the most exciting video I've done, but hopefully this gives you a little bit of insight into the wire recorder. Uh, Webster Chicago made a bunch of different models. Uh, this was more of their, you know, portable, probably used in homes and in offices for dictation. Uh, it sounded like we had uh, maybe a wedding or something being recorded on it uh, in that last recording. So that's kind of neat. I mean, it's neat to hear, you know, voices from, you know, probably 70 or 80 years ago. Uh, you know, somebody's memories are on this thing. Uh, maybe we'll do a part two where we take it apart and try to get this thing working a little bit better. Uh, it is a, uh, uh, a tube type amplifier inside or valves, depending on where you're from. Uh, so, you know, a little bit more in depth look at it might, might, you know, figure out what's wrong with maybe some amplification or something in it in the drive. Like I said, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this because really there's no other use for having this thing working perfectly. It's not something I'm going to be using or recording anything on, so I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on it. Just thought it'd be kind of neat to make a video and show you guys what a wire recorder was. So I hope you enjoyed it. If so, uh, make sure to hit the like button. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, we always have something kind of different on here, so uh, appreciate you watching, and we'll see you all next time.